What scares you about the desert? It's dry. Scorpions. That's why you got to bring a gun. I would kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, spiders are bad enough. If there was just a scorpion on the wall, I would literally kill myself. I guess that's Earth's way of saying we shouldn't be there. Dad, come here. There's a scorpion in my room. Deal with it. I'm not going in there. Yeah, it's like there's a scorpion in my room, too. <laughs> fucking kid. <laughs> this place is fucking infested. I got my own issues. <laughs> One, two, three, four. These boys only want the best of. They want the cream of the crop. They don't want none of that Michael shit. They want the shit that pops. Oscar bait, black and white. Maybe something French. If it's got more than one explosion, honey, put that shit on the bench. Oscar Wieners. Oscar Wieners. Oscar Wieners. These boys are the Oscar Wieners. Yum, yum. Welcome to Oscar Wieners. Yes. The only show on the internet where Hollywood's biggest night um, is a fake, is a phony. <gasps> it's just doing it for the likes. You <laughs> follow for follow? No, you follow me? I block you. <laughs> Do dare, don't you dare follow us, by the way. <laughs> um, we'll follow you back into your house. We're a podcast where we follow you back to your house. <laughs> How about that? How's that for a show? <laughs> Scared? You better be. <laughs> um, I'm Channing. <laughs> and I'm saying the A&D. Um, and this is a podcast where every week we talk about a Best Picture winner at random. And try to figure out if it's Best Picture worthy. And this week we're talking about the 1951 Best Picture winner. All about Eve. Um, Selfish. Also, I'm Michael. I'm Michael. He's Ander. Oh. Hey. Uh, uh, directed by Joseph L. Mankiewicz. Mank. Mank. <laughs> not the Mank, but a Mank. Oh, he's not? The Mank is Herman Mankiewicz, who uh, wrote Citizen Kane. They are brothers, though. Another another duo, another brother, uh, brother directors. Yeah, Herman, Herman Mankiewicz never, I don't think, ever directed. I don't know if they ever even like worked together. I know they, like... As far as I understand, they had like a close relationship, though. But they just like didn't never collaborated. Um, they hate each other. I just said they had a good relationship. I don't listen don't to the first halves of things that you say. <laughs> that's that's absurd. <laughs> I kind of just tune in at the end and respond <laughs> to that. No, just like it's sort of a, especially of his time, like a very famous. Uh, director i guess he um and uh, i think particularly writer um but he's then he also became a very famous director i'd say and he he did um sleuth with uh michael kine oh michael kine um which is a famous movie michael kane Lawrence olivier haven't seen it and then he directed famous disaster um starring elizabeth <laughs> taylor as cleopatra in the titular cleopatra which is a four-hour just like doomed movie um, that I'll probably never see just because it's too long, but it's probably kind of interesting. Was it a famous disaster? Yeah, because it. Know what I'm saying? Just said. Oh, oh, I thought you meant. <laughs> I thought you meant he made a movie called Famous Disaster. <laughs> Sorry, I know I I'm like, throwing out a lot of information. I was gonna say bad name <laughs> for your movie, right? It's kind of an omen. No, he directed Cleopatra, which was a famous disaster. <laughs> Got um, it. Got it. No, so all about Eve. It's all about Eve. I mean, it's kind of about Eve. Um, <laughs> that really is the twist. It's really only <laughs> kind of about Eve. Yeah. Um, it is about. Okay, it's all about Eve. Is about Betty Davis as Margot Channing, who is a who is an aging, um, stage actress. Um, I think she does some film stuff, but she's mostly like a stage performer. Plays. Um, her best friend is uh, 
Karen Richards, who uh, cel- played by Celeste Holm, who was, um, is it Anne in uh, Gentleman's Agreement? She's back. Yes. Okay. That name was so familiar. And I was like, she's in one of these other movies that we've seen. I just couldn't figure out who. Yeah. But yes, um, that does ring a bell now. They're best friends. Uh, Margot Channing is um, dating uh bill sampson who's a famous uh movie and i think also stage director um played by gary merrill and karen is married to george sanders uh who is a playwright uh no never mind i'm lloyd i'm wrong um it is lloyd Lloyd richards yes yes is her hubby karen is married to lloyd richards played by hugh marlowe who's george sanders is that a character in this film George Sanders plays Addison DeWitt, who's like the famous oh, okay. um, critic, um, yeah. kind of narrates the movie. Um, Just like the first 60 seconds. Yeah, he narrates the movie for like a minute and a half and then the final minute and then it's done. I, I do like that opening narration bit because it opens and he's like, <laughs> if you don't know who I am, you must be living under a rock and illiterate and a fucking dumbass. <laughs> it is really like, I definitely... I, that opening narration kind of caught me by surprise because it, I like it made me chuckle like multiple times. <laughs> hey, this movie's kind of throwing fucking fastballs. It it does have a sense of humor. It is dry. It's as it's as dry as one of Margot Channing's martinis, but it is there. Yeah. So the movie is is about Margot Channing's an aging actress. Um. Uh, she takes Eve Harrington, who's a supposed super fan she takes eve harrington under her wing and um eve harrington sort of manipulates herself manipulates um her circumstances uh in order to become a famous actress herself um and that's sort of the the major tension of the of the movie right she where our introduction to well i guess our intro our first introduction to eve is that she's winning an award for being a good actress but yeah our when she's first introduced to the rest of the characters, they kind of do like a little flashback. Um, she's caught in this, in, in this pouring rain in a back alley and she's waiting for Margot Channing outside of um, the building where she just, she performs at. She performs this stage play that's gotten a lot of publicity. Yeah. Um, and she runs into Karen. Yes. Um, Who's being kind of a Karen. <laughs> She's being a little bit of a Karen. They just start chatting it She's up. She's getting kicked out of a Trader Joe's because the bananas weren't on sale. Yeah. You could, t- <laughs> you could tell this is like pre-TMZ era because like they're so trusting of this woman who's like this kind of borderline crazed super fan. She's bragging about how she sees every single performance that Margot Channing is in. She's at their she's at the show every night and karen is like oh well you gotta come meet her <laughs> could you come hang out with us you probably don't have a weapon in and under that large <laughs> coat of yours so she does and she meets all these these primary characters who are famous like playwrights and actors and actresses um and i think that concept is so funny to me because they're immediately fixated on her like imagine walking into a room full of mega famous celebrities and they're all like what's your deal (laughs) like cooper is there and jennifer lawrence is there and fucking howie mandel is there and they're all like what's your story michael deal or no deal he (laughs) says um yeah it is funny um it's really it's some like 1950s ass shit where it's like it seems like in those days you could just like it's sort of like a right place, right time sort of situation. Somebody could look yeah. at you who was famous and be like, you got moxie. Do you want to like be famous? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, I do have moxie. I've been saying this. Yeah. Um, that is kind of nuts. Yeah. Yeah. So they are, they are all the, all the main people are there. You got Margo, um, Karen, Bill and Lloyd. Um, and they're all just like listening to Eve as she tells this, very uh thought out very what it's a thought out tale yeah it's a very it's a like premeditated out. tale it's like a tearjerker it's like she um has been to every performance of like margot's of this play 
she had a hu- like Eve had a husband who died in World War II. Um, she's homeless? Question mark. Yeah, she's sort of very down in her luck. Yeah, um, and she just needs to be given a chance to like. She doesn't even say she wants to be an actress. She's like, I just no. want a chance to like be something. Um, yeah. And she's so not he, looking for help. She's not like, oh, I just wish somebody would help me, wink, wink. She's literally just there s- telling her story because she asked. It feels very natural. Right. And Margot's like, another thing that would never happen, Margot's like, Margo's like, hey, do you actually want to live in my house? <laughs> Imagine being I need Tom an assistance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's like, you could have a uh, fucking Chet's room. <laughs> I've seen Forrest Gump every night of my life. Oh, you should be my intern. <laughs> you can have Chet's room. <laughs> Chet doesn't really hang out here anyway. He's got his own thing going on. But yeah, and so she does. She uh she ends up working for Margot Channing, who is this famous actress. Yeah, and um kind of like mimicking and- her. Like kind of she wants to embody her and basically does everything that she does, like really admires her lifestyle. And it's like, oh, I just want to do the things you do. Yeah. Um, and Margot has, I guess, like a housekeeper slash like, cause she kind of already has an assistant. Um, what's her name? Uh, Birdie, played by Thelma Ritter. I fucking love Birdie. She's funny. She is funny. She talks like this. Oh, I don't know about this girl. Like, she's like very like... <laughs> But it's so funny and it reflects how much of a sucker I was and how much I bought into Eve's story to begin with. Um, Because like when she's talking, like she immediately voices displeasure at this notion that Eve is going to come work at Margot's house. She's immediately like, I don't fucking know who this chick is. Like, like, how do we know we can trust her? She doesn't seem right. Something, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, shut up, birdie. You don't know. (laughs) You're being such a grouch right now. You're being such a negative Nancy. See, let I, the girl fulfill her dream. I um, maybe it's just I've seen so many movies. I was like, e- wow. "There's no way that story Eve's telling is true. There's no way something's up." See, that's so funny because, like, in in rifling through Letterbox reviews, like a lot of people are like, "Wow, some twist saw that coming a mile away," and I'm like, "I didn't. I I didn't know. Oh, I was sorry. kind of surprised." <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not saying like you're, you're perfectly valid in saying that you had seen it coming i just when i first saw it i was just like i was i was surprised by that turn yeah it's definitely Um, like i took eve at face value to be the innocent person that she was right at first yeah it's like the whole movie she was innocent right she didn't do anything wrong it's like (laughs) i kind of fell asleep during like the last 40 minutes (laughs) um yeah so then eve's just uh or yeah, Eve's hanging around, hanging out, doing Margot's stuff. Um, yeah. Margot has this party. See what what makes Margot sus- I can't remember what makes Margot suspect that Eve's not totally on the level. Because then she asks Birdie, she's like, "All right, give me the scoop. You still don't like this girl, right? It's been like a few months that she's been working there." And she's like, yeah. "No, I don't." It's like, "All right, well, tell me why." And she says, "It seems." You know, even though it seems like she admires you, like, it's almost like it's too much. It's almost like she's trying to usurp you or, like, trying to become you, and it's a little bit creepy. Right. And then she kind of sees it in that light, and then that party happens, and then she gets wasted, and she starts yelling at everybody. She also doesn't like that. She's also envious of her youth. Um, She's much younger than Margot is. Um, She's worried that her husband is is maybe interested in Eve, um, who has so much quote. She's like, oh, she's so graceful and all this stuff. Like that, people keep raving about Eve. Yeah, and she's like, all right, everybody, shut up about Eve. Let's talk about me. I feel like the way uh, discourse happens now. I mean, not to. I don't want to make like a huge point, but the way discourse happens now, it's like when we talk about like big things, when the culture talks about big things. I think it almost the culture sometimes seems like it like is saying it for the first time and it's like the first time anybody has thought of it. Um, like I feel like I hear it all the time and it's true. I'm not saying it's not like a, a 
important thing to talk about but like how how women in enter in the entertainment industry in particular are like sort of discarded after after they're like 30 years old um mm. And it seems like that's like a, a newer thing that's being talked about. But like, no, they were saying this shit fucking 75 years ago. And like, this, yeah. I think this movie takes really seriously uh, Margot's like insecurity about aging and um, not being um, just like not just not like her her career just like plummeting because yeah, of her age. Yeah, she's afraid of. Yeah, I think I think it's a really sincere and um insightful exploration of that even though it's made by a boy no man is a boy <laughs> make is, is a boy make is a man uh, i'm a man that part right? but that party seems really good fucking marilyn monroe shows up what is that marilyn monroe yeah with um addison that's her yeah miss caswell that's marilyn p monroe yeah the beautiful woman that's marilyn monroe <laughs> when she came on screen i was like oh that's a beautiful woman <laughs> i didn't <laughs> know that marilyn was double m um i've never seen her move or speak before that's interesting that's new to me is this like a is this is this like a she's a big celeb this is a bit of a cameo or is this like she hasn't really made it yet she's still on the rise her big stuff her big stuff was like just to come it was like very much on the way um, you know, like gentlemen okay. prefer bonds, seven year itch, some like it hot. Those are a few years away, but she had been in stuff. But I think, yeah, I don't know. They're 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 soft, getting her into the audience's consciousness. So that's soft like, oh, launch. this is a person you should like. Yeah, yeah. soft launch. I uh, she does have like my it. favorite line in the movie. Actually, what she say? They're all hanging out together on the stairwell, and and she keeps asking for a waiter. She's like, oh, waiter, waiter. And then Addison DeWitt, who's dating her, is like, uh, those aren't waiters, those are butlers. And she's like, well, butler could be somebody's name. If I start saying butler, people are going to get confused. And <laughs> Addison is like, that's an idiotic point. <laughs> I thought that was really good. Yeah, that party's, that party's good. Margot really fucking lays into everybody. Yeah, she um, goes off. Eve wants to be Margot's understudy. Margot screams everybody at the party. Party ends. The next, like... The next scene or two is Margot finding out that Eve has become her understudy, and everybody's like, "Didn't you know?" Everybody's just gaslighting her. Yeah, but like they also knew. I, they thought that Margot knew, but they she does she didn't. Well, because everybody's fucking sick of Margot's shit. Because she's yeah. like yelling at everybody, she's getting drunk, and and Karen actually kind of incites the whole thing where she's like, "All right, well, I know how to take you down a peg. I'm gonna hire this person that annoys you as your understudy. How about that, Margot?" Right. So they're all kind of like a little bit miffed at her. And you're right. They are gaslighting her. To, and she's like, nobody told me about this. And they're like, oh, we thought you knew, blah, blah, blah. So she yeah. shows up to, um, I guess it's like, like an audition. Or... I think it's an audition for. Oh, it is. Because they were supposed to be, they were supposed to audition Marilyn Monroe. That's what it was. I think it's the new understudy. And then like, but Eve takes that spot or something like that. I think that's what it was. I think she had like already gotten the part or something and she, they were like, oh, we thought you knew or something like that. Whatever. It's maybe the best example we've seen, especially from these old movies, of a couple that like is really loyal to each other, even if they fight. Like Margot and Bill. Yeah. Like Margot is like, Bill, you are flirting with Eve and you want to be with her. And honestly, I thought that was the direction it was going. But Bill's like, you're like, a dumbass. I'm like in love with you. I th and that kind of surprised me. I I thought he was gonna be more of an asshole throughout this thing, but he but he kind of does stay true. Yeah. Um, uh, Eve does try to manipulate him and tries to put moves on him. Is like you know I, I've always felt a connection to you and blah blah blah. Basically fulfilling Margot's fears, and I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, here here it goes. And then he's like, no, I don't, I don't want anything to do with you, actually. Yeah, pretty I was sick. Like, oh, I, I I was like, oh, I didn't see that coming. Actually, that's how little men need to do to get credit. He I'm also, saying he's a good guy, and he's just like he just didn't cheat on his. I I don't lady. I don't think he's like a. I mean, like when he, they had been apart for months. Remember that whole 
section of the movie. Like there was a, a part he was traveling for work or something like that, and then he comes back after an extended right. period of time, and then like right. the first thing he does is to go see Eve. Yeah, that kind of sucked. That's a red flag. Yeah, I don't, he's not. Look, they they have they have he's flaws. good. He's flawless. Flaw- <laughs> right. They have they have flaws, but he's not a yeah. ultimately a bad guy. So yeah. your 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 point does ring true. Thank you. Yeah. Um. And then and then, I I don't totally understand the logic of this plan. So after Margot has that, Margot really pisses everybody off. Um, when she comes in, is yelling about Eve being her understudy. Um, especially Lloyd, who's who's Karen's husband, and he's the the writer of this play. Um, that they've been performing. Um. And he like goes home and he's like complaining to Karen. He's like, she's fucking, she's lost it. I can't deal with her anymore. And Karen's like, I have an idea. Let's go away and then get stuck. I think they go like upstate and get stuck in the Hudson Valley yeah. in the Catskills so that Eve perf- has to do Margot's performance. But like, what's Karen's plan? Is it to like is... is it to like humble Margot? Or is does she think Eve's not gonna be as good as Margot and like Margot's gonna feel more confident? Oh, that's I don't think it's that. I thought it was to fully humble Margot and basically I it's it's almost felt as if she was like Margot's issue is that she, she's so overwhelmed and taken up with her the fact that she's a performer and that her career is fading. I think her plan is to just be like, let's just kill her career, so that that'll just be over with, and we could just be done with that, um, and right. have Eve take over, which ends up being a uh, complete twisted hell fuck nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so not a great move, huh, Karen? Uh, <laughs> bananas on sale, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Who's getting dragged out of the stop and shop now, Karen? <laughs> You want to try Pathmark, Karen? That's yeah. Big, I mean, that's what happens. <laughs> Eve becomes a, a mega celebrity or like a celebrity on the rise. Yeah. And she, then we, we finally, it culminates in this, you know, she wins the award and we're back at the beginning. Although during that, we we find out what a true piece of shit Addison DeWitt is. Like you kind of already sucks. know. He's, but like he sucks. Um. Or the capital X. Um, Addison DeWitt is, even though Eve is manipulating everybody, Addison DeWitt is also manipulating Eve because he figures out her plan. Um, he realizes that her backstory is a lie. He's like, your backstory actually sucked ass and didn't hold up at all. Like I did like, I called up one friend of mine and said like, oh yeah, that whole <laughs> thing you said was bullshit. Like it took me five minutes. <laughs> and he was like, fuck. I didn't think anybody was going to oppress me on that. Um, so he's like, yeah, you're a complete liar. I know how deranged you are. And you, you just want to become a celebrity and you don't care about any of your friends. Um, so he's like, I'm just going to hold that against you and blackmail you into marrying me. How about that? And he was yeah. like, no, that sucks. And he's like, I don't care. Like, I, so I no one's Addison... happy. Yeah, I knew Addison DeWitt was a jerk, but then he's like, he turns into a fucking Bond villain. I'm like, what's your problem? Yeah, and truly, by the end, like, like everyone is upset. Like, it, like it recontextualizes the award ceremony, um, even though Eve is winning for this new role that she's been cast in. Like, it pans to all her friends who she's thanking, and they're all miserable. They're all like. Margot's career has been ruined and Karen's Karen and Lloyd's marriage has been ruined and even Addison is not happy because even though they're he's in a relationship with Eve like Eve still doesn't like him so I don't know what his fucking gambit is he just kind of is just an asshole really yeah the ending is interesting because it culminates with this new woman who enters the fray uh Eve get back, gets back to her hotel room. Um, she turns the lights on to find that there's some random young woman sitting in her chair, which I'm like, holy shit, turn around, <laughs> turn around. <laughs> she's got a gun. <laughs> she's got a gun, she's got a gun. Um, and she pulls an Eve. She's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I just, I work at the hotel. I was just such a big fan of yours and I just wanted to see your room and I accidentally fell asleep and blah, blah, blah. 
and then the last shot of the movie is her and she's try she's like she ends up somehow getting a job which is like what are these hiring processes she gets a job working for eve and then it, it shows her like she's in the mirror like with one of eve's dresses and it's like modeling herself in it and it's like oh she's gonna pull in eve and manipulate everybody yeah which eve eve at one point pulls i think behind backstage during what the, the performance of the play he she pulls like margot's dress over her and looks at herself in the mirror so it's like right. a literal mirror image um, all these characters are very well thought out like i feel like the movie yeah. really understands these people like I, I do think that writing is impressive. The level of thought that went into these characters is impressive. Yeah, the psychology is very clear. Um, yeah, they it, feel fully messy. realized. It's messy, but it's clear, if that makes sense. Right. Um, like, people are complicated, but, like, you could still track why they're doing what they do, what, why they're doing what they're doing. Um, yeah. Did you like this movie? Well, I was just going to ask you the same thing. Um, yeah, I do like this movie. Yeah. Um, I thought that was probably... I think the characters were probably its strongest aspect. Um, and the writing was pretty good. I do think it lacked uh, a significant amount of style. Like, it didn't really... There weren't a lot of attention-grabbing moments. Um, and maybe it just wasn't that kind of movie. But I think, like, stylistically, it was a little bit lacking. Um, it was a little bit slow, a little bit dull at times. Um, like, it's 2 hours 14, but it felt pretty long. Um but there is intrigue. There are characters that I like uh, and characters that like I want to see their arcs come to fruition. Um, so it is worth a watch, I would say. But it wasn't like my favorite in this pantheon of movies. Like I would probably slot it somewhere in the middle. Um, I thought it was good, though. I maybe like it a little bit. I think it's like really good. Um, mm -hmm. I do. Maybe, maybe it's a little long. I was never bored, though. Um, there were moments where I was a little bit bored. Right. I feel like a lot of movies of this period, like 30s to 50s, maybe even a little bit in the 60s, it's like sometimes it's like they're just like filming a play. Yeah. And it's like, that's fine, but it's like, I want, I just saw Challengers uh, recently, which okay. uh, rocked my socks off, and there's like crazy camera work. I'm not saying I want this movie to be, <laughs> to do that, but I'm just saying like, I mean, they're still figuring out the form, I guess. Um, it's also is... kind of a drama. It's not really asking for a lot of flash in terms of style, but I get what you mean, though. Right. There are some fancy camera moments. Like, anytime I see a tracking shot, like when they are driving upstate and the camera's following the car, I'm like, oh, look at this. I'm like, oh, look at this. Yeah. But then there's a also these... a scene where fucking Addison and Eve, I think, are walking together and, like, it's green screen for some reason. It's yeah, like it's they're just projection. walking down. A, it's walking down. A, they're walking down a street, like a city street. I'm like, you couldn't have just filmed that. I don't. That I didn't understand. That a lot. A lot of these movies too. Like there's um when they get stuck in the car upstate. Um Lloyd, who's so it's Lloyd, Margot, and Karen in the car. Lloyd's driving. When the car breaks down, Lloyd gets out of the car and like goes up to find like a gas station or something because they've run out of gas. Um. But Lloyd getting out of the car is this really wide shot, and it's probably not even the actor getting out of the car. It's probably just some guy that they had to like yeah. who's on the day. And it's like a lot of these movies didn't do like exterior shooting. <laughs> it's like really like it, it. That's why it feels like almost playish because it's like right. It, almost, it feels like almost claustrophobic because it's like, will they ever breathe actual air? Um, <laughs> yeah, you know what I do think. I think a lot of my issues with, with the, some of these older movies stems from that. It's like, I want to breathe a bit. I need a little bit of air. Yeah. I got to go um, somewhere else. And I, I think just because of budget constraints and technology constraints, you couldn't yeah. necessarily do that. Right. What again, though? Uh, I also wrote down, uh, I said this movie is like a is like good slash charming Rebecca. Um, I think the characters were more fully realized, but... Rebecca had a more fun twist and better music that I think propelled it a little more. Like, Rebecca held my interest a little more. I don't like Rebecca, so I disagree, but I know what you're saying. It was a bit Rebecca-esque. And I respect you for it. Did you want to hear the other nominees for the 1951 Best Picture year? I did. I've been meaning to ask you about this, actually. <laughs> uh, Actually, I've been meaning ask? to ask you about this when we first met all those years ago. 
about the 1951 best picture year yeah like remember when i when we met and you said i'm michael and i'm i I said i'm mr farts a lot and then i farted and it was like really funny and everybody laughed Um, that's I meant to say, what do you think about the 1954 Best Picture nominee? I said 51. <laughs> that's why I didn't say it all those years ago. <laughs> Asshole. Uh, Christ. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So obviously fucking all about Eve wins. Next up, we have a George Cucker joint. We yes. can't get rid of this guy. <laughs> My man. Um it's called Born Yesterday. Born <laughs> Yesterday. Um, as in, were you born in? Yesterday? As, yeah. yeah. Um, uncouth, loudmouth, junkyard tycoon, <laughs> Harry Brock. <laughs> that should be the full synopsis. Uncouth, loudmouth, junkyard tycoon, Harry Brock descends upon Washington, D.C. to buy himself a congressman or two. <laughs> Bringing with him his mistress, ex showgirl Billy Dawn. Um, that's the movie. Sounds pretty fun. I don't know what it. I don't understand anything about it. So he's like, he's just a corrupt guy. He's a junkyard mogul who's gonna buy yeah. a couple of congressmen. That's incredible. Sounds pretty good. I'd watch it. That's going on the list for sure. Um. Next up, we have Father of the Bride. Oh. Wasn't uh, this nominated Nelly? already? This feels familiar. Yeah, Steve Martin? No. Oh, um, never mind. <laughs> I, assume, I assume that movie's a remake of this. Um, or maybe it's maybe it's an adaptation of the Vampire Weekend album. Yeah, I'm sure it is. A live-action Vampire Weekend adaptation. Um, a Vincent Minnelli joint. Liza's father. Um, oh. It's about proud father Stanley Banks. Um, as he remembers the day his daughter Kay got married. Uh, starting when she announces her engagement, through to the wedding itself, we learn of all the surprises and disasters along the way. Kind of a good premise for a, for a movie, like just it, in general. Um, yeah. What was what was the bad movie that he made that we we've talked about on this show? He directed Gigi, which Gigi. was a, one ah, of the yes. worst pieces of shit I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yes. I will not be watching whatever this is then. Next up we have... Uh, Oh, this movie looks really sensitive. Um, King Solomon's Minds, <laughs> oh. directed by Andrew Martin and Compton Bennett. Um, it is about adventurer Alan Quartermain, who I think is like a British, like, fiction hero, right? Isn't that? I'm sorry, did you say yeah. fiction? Yeah, like 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 prose, like books. Like I think Al- Alan Quartermain is like almost like no, a no, fucking no. It James sounded, Bond. It sounded like you said fiction. Yeah, well, thick fiction. <laughs> yeah, okay, got it. But like thick with two C's, not like just like a big book, of course. Yeah, that should definitely... Sex, sexy books. That should um, be in the library, for sure, as a genre. <laughs> hey, do you have... What's your fiction section? Fiction, non-fiction, <laughs> fiction and non-fiction. Uh, um, oh, God. All right, so this how one's this not... About... How is this not winning a podcast award? It's like... Can't we get a fucking potty or whatever it's called? Oh, I gotta go potty. <laughs> you deserve a goddamn potty. Um, this one's about adventurer Alan Quartermain who leads an expedition into uncharted African territory in an attempt to locate okay. an explorer who went missing during his search for the fabled diamond mines of King Solomon. I bet if... it has a very sensitive depiction of the people of Africa. Then say no more. Um, and finally, a movie we ref- I referenced kind of recently in our apartment episode. Um, I guess that was kind of a long time ago, but yeah. uh, <laughs> it was like twenty weeks ago. Yeah, but it's a Billy Wilder joint. It's it maybe his most famous movie. It is Sunset Boulevard. Oh, um, I'm ready for my close up, Mr. Demille. Um, and it's about a hack screenwriter who writes a screenplay for a former silent film star who has faded into Hollywood obscurity. Sort of a similar premise-ish uh, to All About Eve. Um, but See, the actress it. in Sunset Boulevard is much older. Okay. Um, yeah. See, that's interesting because this I feel like Sunset Boulevard has more cultural cachet than all about eve does like i'm familiar with sunset boulevard i've never seen it but i feel like it's been in my purview 
Yeah, I probably would have picked Sunset Boulevard as the winner of this year, even though I really like All About Eve. Um, have you seen it? I only saw it once. I saw it a long time ago, but in my memory, it fucking rocks. Okay. Okay. Do you think uh, All About Eve is best picture worthy? I do. I think it's a very good movie. I think if a movie like All About Eve came out now, we would be chewing the, the theater seats to bits. We would just be eating the stuffing out of the theater seats why, and why is that? our fists. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, uh, like I, th I think it's easy to maybe overlook a movie like All About Eve now, but I think it's like very well made and very well conceived and very well performed, well written. It feels um, like a Netflix movie now. And I don't mean that as an insult. Well, yeah, people, I mean, I guess they wouldn't really make a movie like, oh, maybe they would. I, don't know. I feel like they do a lot of high drama, maybe low scope type of movie. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of what, yeah. what this is. It was good. I, I do think it's best picture worthy. You want to know what some folks had to say? Some fucking yeah. jackasses on the internet. Yeah. I shouldn't have said that. These are actually really nice <laughs> people. I met them personally. I found some reviews on the internet. Oh. About all about. About reviews about all about Eve. Would you like to Got hear it. some? Yeah. First, just for the sake of anonymity, I'm going to need you to give me a fake name. Um, give me the name of somebody who's best friends with Ryan Gosling. Uh, Emma Stone. <laughs> Emma Stone says five stars. Five stars. Perfect. That's a lot of stars. Emma. I was the only one in the theater for this, which is a shame. Actually, before the film started, <laughs> there was a couple of a, a couple a few rows back, but when the black and white Fox logo appeared, one of them said. This isn't La La Land. And then they walked out. <laughs> Damn straight, this ain't La La Land. This actually won Best Picture. Uh, Get him. Nice. That's funny, Emma Stone. <laughs> that was Emma Stone in the back. <laughs> <laughs> that was Emma Stone. Wait, this isn't La La Land? <laughs> this is not my film. <laughs> God damn it. She missed the premiere, so she had to take her mom and dad to the next, the, just a regular <laughs> screening. Now give me the name of somebody who thinks uh, was the anti cheerleader, who was the, the the kid under the bleachers, smoking a cigar for some reason, just apathetic to the world and not giving a damn about anybody or anything, including himself. Taylor Whatever. Swift. Taylor Swift says she's cheer captain, and I'm on the bleachers. <laughs> she sure is. Taylor Swift says half of a star. Scientists create most drawn-out movie ever. Critics say one of the best ever made. This is the perfect background noise movie. It lasts forever, so you don't need to change it. Nothing dramatic or distracting happens, so you can do your chores in peace. And it's black and white, so it makes you feel classy for having it on. Fair enough. I will say, I had I had been led to believe that All About Eve was was a, a five-star masterpiece one of the greatest movies ever made oh um, interesting so I, I a little bit went in with that and i was slightly disappointed that i only thought it was really good um, oh okay but fair enough i i had no idea what it was going to be going into it yeah i thought it was fine to good um two less... stars <laughs> but yeah we give it three we give nice. it three I, I i liked watching it um last review i'll read um, give me the name of someone who's, <laughs> this is a one star review. So give me the name of somebody who's twice a Taylor Swift. Stevie Nicks. Nice. Stevie Nicks says one star watching this movie. Maybe <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. Watching this movie made me feel like I was listening to. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Watching this movie made me feel like I was listening to Charlie Brown's parents talk. <laughs> because, man, this was so boring. There's no tension in this at all. It just goes and goes and goes. It never seemed to stop. <laughs> watching this felt like watching beige paint. Worse yet, for a movie that's theoretically all about Eve, she feels like an underdeveloped side character in this. It's weird how she's treated like an evil schemer, conniving her way to the top, but we rarely get anything from her. Normally it's about her, but there's so many scenes where she's absent or otherwise completely subdued. It's pure nothing. It's barely a film. It's such a non-story that the praise for it astounds me. Stevie, go off. I wouldn't have expected the writer of 
Rhiannon to hate this fucking movie, but no God way. bless. God bless. Um, um, I mean, I mean, we do admit, right? Like, she does kind of take of a... She, she kind of sidecars for a little bit, Eve, right? Until the end when she's like, it is. it does become all about Eve. Yeah. Is she the main character, though? Maybe she's not. Like, the no. fact that the title is all about Eve, I think that's just... Um, I think that's just a symbol for maybe how Margot conceptualizes Eve. Yeah. Or maybe how she's treated in the movie. Like, in the movie, it is kind of all about Eve, I guess. But even though she's not the main character, per se. Yeah, no, I'd agree with that. I would say Margot's the main character. Um, yeah. Margot resigns herself to the thing she can't control, which is, like, people may... Right ignore me at some point um maybe it's already gonna start to happen but like whatever i'm i'm getting married to bill and that's my life like my life doesn't necessarily have to be um the thing i do um so do you think that karen was ultimately right like did her plan succeed i guess it kind of did um weirdly enough yeah sometimes you should uh do things that might hurt your friends because in the end it might help them. Drain the gas out of their car. (laughs) Tank their career. (laughs) Thoughts? I don't know. Send an email to their boss that they got dragged out of a stop and shop because the bread was too expensive. Karen. Next week, I think we should just dive into it. I think we should dive into the muck. Oh. Okay. Let's be a couple of muckrakers. Yeah, I've always wanted to. Next, <laughs> next, you've always said that. Next yeah. week, we're gonna talk about maybe the best year um, in movie history. At least one of the top like three best years in the history of filmed content. Okay. Um, 1999. We're talking about American Beauty. Oh, starring Kevin Spacey, a man oh. who. Uh, has a flawless track record <laughs> as a stand-up citizen and not a vile piece of shit. Um, Great. Yeah. A movie I've I've seen, American Beauty. You know, American Beauty is one of those movies where, like, I saw back in, like, 2011 when, like, all these YouTube... I was watching all these YouTube boys who would, like, unbox Blu-rays on YouTube. I'd, I'd watch that. <laughs> okay. That's strange. Shut up. Well, okay. Um, no, everyone's and... got their thing. They would always put American Beauty at the top of their list because they were probably also really level-headed good boys. Um, it had the best box set I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I watched it, and I think I told myself I liked it more than I actually did. I think it's, in my memory, it's uh, it's okay. What's the movie about the horse? You're thinking of War Horse. No. Something Beauty. Uh, Black Beauty? Maybe Black Beauty, yeah. Is it Black Beauty? Is that a is that a movie about a horse? Whoa, Black Beauty, bam, bada, lam, I said a bit out of job, bam, bada. Yeah, Black Beauty. Yeah, think of that. Come back next week for that, or or don't, or call Congress and have us charged with crimes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Go for it. So, um, until next time, somebody hands you a hot dog. Yeah. And they're like a huge fan of yours. They're like, try this hot dog with all this, I, my, with my homemade mustard. Don't Ew. eat that dog. <laughs> no, don't do it. Especially if they say homemade mustard. Yeah. I, I stepped on these mustard seeds myself. Oh, okay. Don't do it. Mm-hmm. Instead, go to the cart down the street, buy a dog. Even if yes. it has like a nail in it or a screw, that's better than the homemade mustard it's dog. Fine. It's fine. It's fine. That's just a city baby. That's it. See you. See you next week, wieners. One, two, three, four. These boys only want the best stuff. They want the cream of the crop. They don't want none of that Michael shit. They want the shit that bops. Oscar bait, black and white. Maybe something French. Uh-huh. If it's got more than one explosion, honey, put that shit on the bench. Oscar wieners. Oscar Wieners, Oscar Wieners, these boys are the Oscar Wieners.
we've never done one together in the set. Like, I want to just feel that dynamic. Totally. I want to feel your musty, stanky breath. That's on my brittle, frail little bones. I was going to say you were mean to me, but I guess you think really low of both of us. I do. Yeah. I think we're just frail little stink lads. <laughs>